in Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain. Hi, thank you for joining us on this fifth lesson of our Street Level Messiah. We've talked about several different things already, looking at different character traits of Messiah. And today we're going to look at him being vulnerable. And the, the picture that I think, at least for me, that seems to show this vulnerability, we've talked about it already a little bit in, this, in our study about him making himself available, but it is the birth of Jesus. He, it is a picture of complete dependence and defensiveness to just see this child, a baby, uh, he can't do anything for himself. It's just complete picture of defenselessness. Uh, it's weakness, vulnerability, dependent upon mom. I need everything. Um, that's street level Messiah. You said in, in one of the earlier lessons he was born in a barn, but he was just born. I mean, just as a baby <laughs> is the amazing aspect of this to me, showing how vulnerable he is. Yeah, it's everything that I would not picture of God. When I think of God and you're going to write out a list of things... This picture right. of him being born and weak and defenselessness. And one of the passages that came to mind for me was Revelation 12, 1 through 5, which I realize we're dealing with figurative language, but that, that kind of helps me here. And so you have a picture, the sign opens in verse 3, and you have this great red fiery dragon. So we're going to be talking about Satan versus Jesus here. Right. And, and so if I'm thinking cosmic battle... Who's going to face off against a fiery red dragon who with his tail can wipe away the third of the stars? That's not a baby. Right. Nobody has a chance. It looks like. No. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, it even says in verse 4, And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. So here's God. He comes to do battle with the devil. Right. And he comes in the vulnerable picture of a baby. Let me ask you this. When the Hebrew writer says in chapter 1 and 2 that for a little while Jesus, who is God, exact representation of God, for a little while was made lower than the angels, why? What does that mean? Well, I guess part of it is so that I can understand and associate more with him at a street level, but it also would have to refer to the death, that he's going to have to endure a death uh, he, he's not going to be just God in the sense of far removed and above all of that. He'll make himself so vulnerable that he grows out of this babyhood to childhood to adulthood, but he's going to make himself so vulnerable that at that point, at that moment, he will allow himself to die to be killed for us. Uh, that, that for me is what I see. That, I mean, that's a picture of absolute vulnerability. He gives himself up and under to them even though he has the power to change all of that. And uh, it really is an amazing picture. Uh, as you go into your small groups again and talk about this a little bit more, you're going to explore a little bit from the birth standpoint. Think about this vulnerability. We talked about some of those characteristics before. Look at that in your small groups, and then we'll come back together. We're going to talk about the, the death and the final scene of Jesus in the next part. So we'll be with you in just a couple of minutes. Okay, we're back again with you. This is part two. We're looking at this ongoing series, and we're talking about Jesus making himself vulnerable. Uh, I hope in the last section, when you got into your small groups, you talked some about the birth and, and that vulnerable nature of that. And then one of the things that struck me when uh, in between cuts here, when we were getting ready for this, you, you made the statement that uh, interesting about this is that in reality, he wasn't vulnerable but he made himself vulnerable, that he, he did this. And, and I thought, as we've got in this passage there, Philippians 2 and verse 7, he made himself nothing. Uh, Jesus had the power to call it all to a stop at any point along the way. But this picture of vulnerability, if, 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 to me, you look at this person who's got a close friend, who's one of his inner circle, he denies him, he rejects him, he turns him over, actually betrays him, He's arrested, Jesus is, he's in the guard. I mean, it, it's a horrendous treatment that he receives. He's bound, he's blindfolded, he's slapped, he's, he's mocked, he's taunted. Uh, sentences passed on him that he has no, nothing that he does to stop it at all. 
and it, it, it was unfair. And hey, you get the doorbell too. Um, <laughs> and and an innocent one is complete. He's charged, and now he's carried out to to, to go and, and die. This absolute vulnerability. You know, what we talked about one of the traits of Jesus. We've already talked about is that Jesus was authentic or real. Right. It doesn't get any more real than now these final week events that you've just you've yeah. just talked about. I mean, he was a man, and we've talked about, sometimes we struggle with talking about Jesus, uh, his humanity. Right. He was betrayed. He was handed over. He did get flogged. Jesus bled. Right. Uh, and they have all these things, and, and maybe nowhere does it get more real for me And thinking about his vulnerability is the garden scene. He's, he's with his disciples. Right. They, they make that transition. He even asks them, hey, can you guys keep watch for me? I mean, he's... He knows what's coming. It's, it does not going to get any worse than what it is. They fall asleep. He goes and prays. And Luke records even sweat drops of blood. I mean, what's your picture of the garden? I, well, it just seems, I mean, it truly is an overwhelming picture of, of almost emptiness or abandonment. Uh, you know, he, he's got his close friends there. Hey, pray with me. I'm going through this tough, tough time. And, uh, and they can't even hang on. I mean, I mean, they're so tired. You know, I, I've, I've sat and felt like I was tired before where I just can't hardly keep my eyes open. Here, here they are, and, and he comes back again, and he comes back. You still can't, you can't, still can't keep your eyes open. You still can't watch and pray. I, I need this help at this moment, but I'm not getting any from you. And, and, and you say that, that prayer. He turned to his father, but it was still, he's overcome. It's just... Uh, the, the sweat drops, as you said, of blood. I mean, he, he's just praying, Father, if there's any other way, um, let this cup pass from me. It, it, it's, a, it's a stark picture, that's for sure. Well, and so as we're, we're talking about this, again, why are we talking about this? Why did you even pick Jesus' vulnerability as something that we need to think about? And, and what we're looking at is he made himself vulnerable to the point of death. And as I'm thinking about that, I don't know how small groups are going for everybody at this point, but, <laughs> right. you know, it's probably uncomfortable at times. Uh, try right. filming these videos and <laughs> right. you want to talk about uncomfortable. <laughs> That's right. You know, but, but nobody's going to die from a small group. Right. And, and, and so... At least we hope. <laughs> That's right. And the whole purpose of the small groups is, is for us to open up with one another and to relate to one another. Why did Jesus make himself vulnerable? So he could meet us where we are. Right. And he did it to the point of death. And so, goodness gracious, it puts it on me. I've got to be willing to open up. There's a great C.S. Lewis quote, and, and I don't have it in front of me, and you guys can look it up, but that to love it all is to be vulnerable. If you're going to open up That's and right. get to know somebody, then, then you are. If you're going to let me in and it's, we're going to have a real relationship, then you risk and I risk being hurt and letting you in. And that's what Jesus was willing to do for us. Well, absolutely. And that's the way I think, I mean, that's one of those pictures. If, if we segue over, talk about a marriage relationship, it's two people who have come together. They, they meet each other. They come to know each other, love each other. But if it's really going to be a genuine love, a love that's, that's going to be strong in a, in a marriage, then we have to make ourselves open and vulnerable to this other person. They have to know who we are. And that's that segue for us to talk about, again, that, that box section on, your, on the handout is, is how can we become more vulnerable some of that should be happening in your small groups. Uh, some of that just as you start developing those relationships and thinking mm -hmm. about them, as you open up like that, as you begin to learn in those ways more about your friend, your brother, your sister, your neighbor, you start learning these things about you that helps, uh, uh, about them, that helps you to be able to relate to them. And that picture of God, you ask the question, why look at this one? I guess because it does help me to see that uh, I mean, this is really again street level. Yeah. This is down to to <laughs> me. That uh, this is not the picture of what I would think of God, like you pointed out before at the birth in the last section uh, of this fiery red dragon. He didn't have a chance yes. against a fiery <laughs> red dragon. But here is this vulnerability because he knows what he is doing. He's giving himself into that. So. You might want to look at those things, look at the further studies, a couple other places you could look at and talk about, um, some good things for you to consider, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week for our last one in this special series.
Till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on Him was laid, here in the death of